Yo guys, what's up? So today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite topics. I think this is one of the most uh, fun things in game actually. Uh, so I, <laughs> we actually had a member ask us, so how do you deal with non-reactive girls in the beginning? When to move on and to when to stay in the conversation? And if so, how to get her opening up? Which essentially kind of translates into like, how do you handle like non-responsive slash bitchy girls? A lot of guys, they will label these girls as bitchy. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it, that's, that is kind of true. But we need to take on a different uh, perspective and mindset here. We need to sort of take responsibility for, for that behavior because that's the only way that we're truly going to have any form of control whatsoever about the situation, right? Um, so without further ado, let's just get into it. So there are a couple of things that I want to cover in this video. So first, we're going to talk about why is she being non-reactive slash bitchy in the first place, right? Second thing we're going to talk about is how to avoid negative reactions on your approach. Third, this, this is where we get into like the super, you know, like super fancy technical um, magic trick shit. So we're going to talk about uh, continuity plans. So essentially like strategies that you can implement to sort of turn these interactions around. And then we're also going to talk about like when to actually like move on. So first of all, let's start with why is she being non-reactive or bitch or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's honestly very, very simple. Based on your first impression, she, she simply doesn't perceive much value in you. Think about it. If she truly saw you as high value and attractive, she would want to obtain you, right? And ignoring you and giving you like negative reactions or essentially like giving you shit and being like essentially non-compliant is very, very counterproductive to obtaining the value, which is you in this case. So anyways, based on your first impression, she doesn't perceive much value. And there are a couple of potential reasons why this could be. Um, so the most common one is by far like having weak subcommunications or just opening with, with a complete lack of like assertiveness and confidence, right? By far the n number one most common reason. If this is in like night game as well, it, it could simply be also that like outside of your interactions, like your body language hasn't been on point. You know, a lot of guys, they're, they, they're kind of like aware of their body language and everything when they're actually inside an interaction, but they're not really thinking about how they're coming across while they're outside of the interaction. Like when they're just chilling, when they're not interacting with anyone. This is super important because, because girls, they're constantly like scanning the environment. And they're definitely going to pay attention to if, if, you, if you don't look good, so to speak, uh, even when you're not in an interaction, when you're just chilling. If you're standing there with like timid body language and you're just looking like uncertain, like you have no idea what the fuck you're doing, like you don't belong in this, in this club or whatever, I mean, that's, that's, that's not going to be good. All right. Another potential reason, it could simply be that your, your presentation is shit, right? It could be that, like, you're not groomed, uh, like, your haircut is shit, like, your beard looks like trash, like, your fashion is uh, maybe really bad, right? Like you, like, you don't know how to dress. These things are definitely going to be enough to, to, to fucking blow you out of interactions, and that should not come as a surprise to anyone, right? Because... There's sort of like this fucking weird narrative in this community that like, oh, bro, like your looks don't matter. Like you can, you don't have to fucking shave. You don't have to get a haircut. You can dress like a fucking homeless guy. It doesn't matter. Just go in and like be free from outcome and you know, sh shit like that. That's not, that, uh, that is absolutely not the case. These things fucking have to be on point if you want to maximize your results. Like, sure, you can probably get some results. Like... I have personally like actually gotten pretty good results having fucking horrible presentation in the past. It didn't stop me, but it's, it's something to be aware of. Like they are, it is going to have a fucking impact. Let's just leave it at that. So another reason could be that she's simply testing to see how you're dealing with the pressure. So let's say, for example, that you open with a lot of confidence, you open with a lot of assertiveness and your presentation is on point but she's still being sort of like non-reactive, 
right? That could simply be to sort of test to see how you deal with the pressure. And here's the thing, if you stay calm, collected, and grounded while she's giving you essentially like zero validation or zero positive reactions, that is a sign of true confidence. And they definitely notice this. This is something that is incredibly hard to fake. So for them, it's kind of like an honest signal, like this, this is real fucking confidence. The third reason as well, it could simply be because she actually has a fucking boyfriend. That happens. Let's move on to actually avoiding negative reactions on your approach. So number one, like these are the fixes, the fixes to, to the potential reasons why this shit could be happening. So number one thing, guys, fix your sub communications and fix your fucking presentation. So you can watch all of my other videos for more in-depth information about sub communications. I feel like I've talked about it in every single video. I don't really need to go more in depth in this one and get your fucking wardrobe and get your fucking fashion on point and go get a fucking haircut, go to the barber, get, get your beard trimmed, get, get like a fade or whatever, like fi fix that I immediately. There, there is absolutely zero excuse for, for going out and gaming with poor presentation. That, that is honestly just fucking laziness. It, it's not acceptable. Number two, become more comfortable with social pressure, right? So th this is something that is really, really gonna help you being more confident and assertive, which is obviously like a really, really big attraction trigger. Look, if you lack the confidence and assertiveness, it's like you can have the most perfect fucking variables. It's, it's not gonna matter. It's simply gonna have zero impact. So um, th the way that you actually like become more comfortable with social pressure is is through exposure therapy, right? So this is essentially just putting yourself in stressful social situations on a daily basis and pushing your comfort zone. This could, for example, be like going out and, uh, and approaching interactions that really, really intimidate you, right? It could be like approaching like a really, really hot girl. It could be like opening like a group. Uh, get creative. I mean, you know yourself, like what actually scares you the most? Is it interactions with other guys, right? That's a big one for, 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 for a lot of guys. They're, they're really intimidated by, by other guys and social interactions. And that, if that's you, then that's something you got to fucking work on because you're going to be an easy target for guys to like fucking amog you and shit. You know, guys tooling you, right? You don't want that. that that's, not, that's not good. All right, so you want to fix that. Number three, you want to learn how to approach more confidently slash, slash assertively. So obviously this ties into the previous points as well. But the point I want to make here is you want to go in, you want to have like amazing vocal projection. So you want to be loud. Actually, you want to be much louder than you think you should be. Much guys, they're much, much, they're way, way, way too timid and way, way, way too careful, which essentially fucks them over. Right? You want to have open body language, you want to take up a lot, don't be afraid to take up space, don't be afraid to get close either. And I, I'm going to put a disclaimer with don't be afraid to get close because that could be uh, misinterpreted, right? So you always want to be reading, engaging her body language and facial expression. Obviously, if she's uncomfortable, you fucking back off. Right? But if she's comfortable and you know she's responding well, like don't, don't be afraid to do this. The, this is going to be really, really good because it's going to allow you... Uh, so essentially when you get closer, it's going to allow you to build tension, which is, you know, she's, at some point she's going to get like, turned on, which is really good for your interaction. Number four, build, actually building value before approaching. So let's say you're doing day game. This is obviously going to be more difficult, but if you're doing night game, there are, there are so many fucking things you can do to build value before you actually approach, right? So you can build social proof in the value. This could be in the form of getting positive reactions from other women. It could be getting positive reactions, being respected by other men in the environment. It could be being connected with the bouncers or the bartenders, right? So if you're going to a place very frequently, you should absolutely make an effort to befriend the bouncers, bouncers and bartenders in the venues because I'll tell you this like from experience like I've had bouncers actually like come up and like you know essentially like wing me in my interactions and making me look really really good and the, the girl's reaction will essentially be like wow like how, how, do, how do you know everyone here like are you famous or something it, it sounds absolutely ridiculous but sometimes that's the conclusion they jump to and you know 
I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop her from <laughs> from being in that perception. It's uh, it's really good. And I, I want to repeat this point as well, like building value before approaching ties into what I said earlier about having amazing sub-communications and body language uh, outside of your interactions as well. Right. So I want to go into like a mindset as well when it comes to, you know, going into these interactions with, with girls that look somewhat like bitch or like intimidating and you're like expecting a bit of attitude, right? So you want to go in with the mindset of essentially like, fuck yeah, like bring it on. Right. You don't want to go into this interaction thinking uh, this is going to be a, a perfect interaction because you're just going to be surprised when it's not. Right? And if you're approaching a girl that you think is going to be a bit like this, it's probably not going to be perfect. Right? You're going to have some obstacles. But you also don't want to go in thinking like, oh, this is, this is going to be shit because then your sub-communications are going to be absolutely trash and you're just going to lack the confidence and you know, that's going to result in a blowout, which we don't want. So essentially, like, bring it on. Hopefully, this is going to go well, but if this doesn't go well, I'm going to fucking deal with it. I'll find ways to turn it around and embrace the challenges and the obstacles. And you also want to have the mindset of this being a learning experience, right? Because you go into this interaction, you go into this interaction even though this, this could be, like, really tough, there could be, like, a lot of obstacles and shit, but essentially, like, you're going to learn how to handle it. And you also want to reframe the narrative in your head. So we can change the frame, we can change our own perception, right? We change the narrative from she's being bitchy slash rude slash non-responsive to she's playfully testing my confidence and groundedness. That's a much, much, much better uh, headspace to come from going into this. And it's going to cost you to, to have sort of like the right behaviors when you're going in you're going to be more inclined to act that way. Rather than, let's say you go in with the mindset of, she's being bitchy slash rude. Well, dude, that, that's going to turn confrontational pretty quick. Uh, which is like, if the interaction turns confrontational, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. All right, so let's go into the, con uh, let's go into the really fancy shit. We're going to go into the continuity plans. So let's start with continuity plan number one. This is uh, friendly framing, which is essentially like, we're placing her in a positive frame, right? So if you're framing her as being friendly early on, she's going, to, she's going to be more likely to behave that way because it's like a positive frame. She's being perceived in a positive way. Everyone wants to be perceived in a positive way. And also uh, with that is also the implication that if she's giving you negative uh, responses now, that means that she's not friendly. So she's going against, she will go against the frame, the positive frame that you placed her in, which in turn puts her in, in a more negative frame and no one wants to be negatively perceived. Something that could happen when you're running this continuity plan is they could say something along the lines of I'm not friendly or I'm bitchy. Because some girls, they take pride in having that attitude, uh, depending on where you are, like especially if you're in like America. And if this is the situation, you want to provoke her further, right? So. We essentially need to trigger like an emotional reaction here. It doesn't really matter if it's a positive or negative emotion, but we need to snap her out of that non-reactive slash non-responsive uh, state where she doesn't give a shit as quickly as possible. Like I said earlier, some, some or many girls pers uh, actually like to be perceived as bitchy and as if she's like intimidating men. That's actually going to be the case um, quite a lot with these girls because a lot of guys are intimidated by them. But you can really separate yourself by being like the one guy who's actually not intimidated by that shit. So, so I will share with you like my go-to response when I'm in this in, uh, in these situations. I will say something along the lines of like like you're not bitchy at all, like you're harmless. All right? But I want to deliver it sort of like as I wrote it in the PowerPoint as if you're kind of laughing at the fact that she thinks it's bitchy. Like, you're not taking it seriously whatsoever. Um, so what's going to happen in this scenario is she's actually going to start acting bitchier to get out of that what she perceives to be the negative frame, which is being harmless and not being bitchy. That, for her, that's a negative uh, frame. So she's going to start acting more bitchy to, to be perceived the way that she wants to be. AKA bitchy, right? 
And now, when she starts doing that, you can start framing her as she's trying too hard, right? So you can say something along the lines of like, look, you can just be yourself. Like, you, you seem very friendly, you seem very nice. Like, you don't have to do all of this. Like, uh, like I, I like you, you're cool. Don't worry about it. You know, something along those lines, right? Calibrate to the situation. It, it has to sort of make sense. It has to sound kind of smooth when you're saying it. At this point, like, swear to fucking God, nine out of ten times, this is when they're going to start laughing and that sort of like bitch shield is going to absolutely shatter, right? This obviously, guys, this has to be done in a very playful and non-confrontational way. So you need to be really aware of your tonality. There, there has to be absolutely zero aggression or frustration in your voice when you're doing this. And this goes back to the mindset that I talked about earlier, like fucking bring it on. If you're... If you feel like she's being like disrespectful or like fucking insulting you, she's being rude, then you're naturally going to sort of communicate that frustration and anger, which is going to cause them to get defensive. It's just going to be like a shitstorm. So be, be calibrated and, you know, be careful. Continuously plan number two, anti-framing. So essentially what anti-framing allows us to do is it allows us to change the narrative slash the reality of the situation so you could say something along the lines of is it because i'm blank right and in the blank you could put something like is it because i'm asian right here we're sort of framing her as potentially being racist which is a negative frame no one wants to be perceived that way right and she's going to say something like She's going to essentially give like an excuse. So she will say, no, it's because we're having a girl's night. So this is her going against the negative frame and giving an excuse. So at this point, the narrative and the frame has been switched from that you're being rejected because you're not attractive to I'm spending time with my friends. And now we have a situation that we can actually work with. If we're in the frame that we're sort of like being rejected or ignored because we're not found to be attractive, then I mean, it's going to be fucking much tougher than I'm spending time with my friends, right? This is, going to, this is going to win you a little bit more time to display value and turn the interaction around. Continuous plan number three. This one is really interesting. So this, this is about validation and group dynamics. So here I'm actually going to give you guys a like step-by-step -step strategy that you can actually implement right away. So let's say you go into an interaction and you know you have one girl, she's just giving you like fucking nothing. She's just, uh, just overall like non-compliant basically. This is what you would do in that situation. So step number one would be to switch to a more compliant friend in, in the group. And while you're doing this, you sort of want to like, uh, like t turn your back towards her and completely ignore her. Right? So you're essentially like punishing that behavior and you're only interacting with her friend one-on-one. -on -one. And what you also want to do, you, step number two is you want to start validating that friend, right? Because we need to give her a reason and like an incentive to interact with you because she might be thinking something like, my friend rejected you, so why should I talk to you, right? And she might also feel like she's not really having her friends back and... Another thing with the validating, uh, validating this friend is that it slightly disqualifies you uh, because it's coming from like a very, very friendly place. It's not like you're like explicitly hitting on her at this point or something like that. And this, uh, what's also really good about this is it communicates to the first girl that she's not being friendly, right? This places her in a negative frame and the way out of that negative frame is by being friendly to you. Do you see a pattern here, guys? We're, we're finding ways to sort of punish the behavior that we don't want by placing her in a negative frame. And the only way to get out of that negative frame, essentially, is to start acting the way that we want her to, right? So at this point, the next step would be when you're interacting with the friend one-on-one -on -one now, of course, because we're still ignoring her. We have our back turned, right? We want to start displaying value. So this could be like through actively DHVing verbally. It could be... Um, that's, that's going to be like the main way to do it, right? And so essentially we want to create positive reactions or even attraction with the friend. And what this is going to do is this is going to cause uh, essentially pre-selection, right? So now the first, 
the girl who initially blew you out is seeing you get all this positive reaction and attraction from the friend now, and she she's gonna start like reevaluating um, her initial perception of you, and she's also going to feel that like validation strip because you're completely ignoring her now, and you're you're giving so much validation to the friend, and you know this girl she's probably used to like rejecting guys left right and center and she's gonna she's not gonna like that her friend is getting the validation that she typically gets so she's gonna she's gonna find a way to get it back very very reliable strategy right so the fourth step here ties into the point that i made before she's gonna find a way to get that validation back so She's gonna try to either like re-engage or like rejoin the conversation, or she's gonna start giving you other form of IOI. So for example, she might start exposing her neck, she might start flicking her hair to sort of get your attention. And that's when you know that you can start giving her a little bit of validation and giving her like a little bit of reward, uh, essentially like giving her a bit of compliance, let's say, right? But you need to keep this in mind, like if you give her too much, she's just gonna blow you out again, right? And we also want to find, step number six, we want to find ways to make her qualify herself so we can switch that dynamic around, right? This is going to give her the perception that, that she's chasing you, right? And if you don't know how to make girls qualify, guys, we got fucking tons of guides how to do that in the mastermind. Just fucking join it. Two weeks free. I might make a video on it in the future. There might already be one up. I'm not sure, to be honest, but... Yeah, that's a topic for another video. I want to keep this somewhat short. But yeah, so essentially, we want to, we want to, we want to turn around the entire interaction, right? We want, to, we want to turn it from the point where she's ignoring you to the point where she's slightly chasing you. And very, very reliable strategy to do so. Right. Contingency plan number four. Game other girls in front of her. Guys, this is my fucking favorite. This is my favorite. This is my go-to, right? Um, this is kind of high risk, high reward. It's probably why I like it, to be honest. Um, so essentially, we're building value through pre-selection because she's going to see you get all this positive reaction and attraction from other girls if you're doing well, right? Uh, yeah, so the disclaimer is this is only going to work if, if it's actually going well in interactions with the other girls, right? And ideally, the girl that you approach afterwards and game in front of her should ideally be hotter than her or at least somewhat equivalent because if you're going up and like gaming like a girl that's much you know less attractive than her she's gonna be like oh whatever like doesn't give a shit but so essentially you want to display the traits that you lacked in the initial interaction so for example if you lacked assertiveness and dominance in your initially failed interaction with the um, bitchy girl, let's just call her that, right? Uh, make sure to display these traits in this interaction, right? And if you came across as maybe like too eager, too desperate, too easy in the first interaction and that's why you got blown out, then you really want to make sure that it looks like the new girl is chasing you, right? And there are a couple of ways you can do this, like it's two easy ways I'll give you here. Uh, you can lock in against the wall, so essentially just leaning back against the wall while the girl is just uh, standing in front of you because that's essentially going to make it look like from the outside, like the girl is putting in more effort than you. Um, and the other way is to actually make her chase, which is essentially like through displaying a lot of value and making her qualify herself. It's very simple, guys. Make her chase is simply a matter of displaying value, making her qualify. A lot of times it's that simple. You put all of these things together, right? And this, this first girl, she's seeing all of this. This is going to cause her to quickly reevaluate her perception. She's going to be like, fuck, I, I, was, I was wrong about this guy. And she's going to feel like a little bit of jealousy. She's like, fuck, I could have had him. She's going to try to get you back a lot of times. Like, I've turned around so many interactions and I've like, banged so many girls who initially like, blew me out like, using this strategy. Um, so there, there was this Russian girl in Crete. She, she was essentially like fucking ignoring me, right? And then I went up and I spoke to like a French girl and I pulled her and I banged her on the beach. And I had one of my wings, like one of my friends, um, tell this Russian girl's friend that that's what happened. Like I banged this other girl on the beach. And after that, like she, everything was completely turned around. And I pulled her as well and I banged her on the beach as well, like an hour later. So I had another situation with, <laughs> with a German girl in Budapest, like pretty much exactly the same situation, right? Uh, but, you know, she was also completely ignoring me, you know, I was, I was trying to make it work for like, 
actually like an hour, but I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. Like, it's not gonna, it's like, whatever. Um, I'm gonna try something now because it's fucking going nowhere. So I actually, I get this German girl to introduce me to another girl in the club, right? Because I'm like, oh, I mean, she, she kind of doesn't want to talk to me. So she will be more than happy to introduce me. So boom, I start off the next interaction with, with social proof because I got introduced by a girl, right? And I end up pulling this Israeli girl and banging her outside of the club. And uh, actually, David, who I was winging with, tells the German girl's friend that that's what happened. And boom, now I have attraction from the German girl all of a sudden. Go fucking figure. And I end up pulling her two hours later as well. Um, so this shit really fucking works. This, this is my favorite fucking strategy. All right, guys, so I wanted to cover like when to move on uh, from the interaction as well. But the video is simply just going to be way too long if I go into that. Uh, so I'm just going to make a separate video about that in the future. So you'll probably have that hopefully within a couple of weeks. If you want more content like this, fucking subscribe, comment, all of that shit. Join the mastermind two weeks free. Honestly, it's the best fucking service in the industry. Um, you know, you can post uh, your, the audio of your interactions. We're going to break down your infield, like infield breakdowns. We're talking about psychology. We're like breaking down text game, um, teaching frame control, teaching social dynamics, you know, working on like uh, essentially like inner game, uh, like creating better mindsets, helping you be more assertive and dominant in your day to day life, improving your social skills overall, all of that good shit and so much more. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Peace out.